within three years somewhere else in town or pay the town a total of 1.4 million dollars to be used for the construction of affordable housing. As part of that mitigation agreement, there's a payment schedule that said $400,000 would be paid on the three-year deadline and $200,000 would be paid annually each subsequent year for five years and should construction be ahead of schedule for the project, um, any balance due on the 1.4 million would need to be paid before the building permit for the final building could be issued. Per the special permit, quote, this money will be designated for the construction of affordable housing and must be deposited in a separate town account established for this purchase. So Article 16 um, is really that Pulte chose to pay the mitigation. The town has to date received $600,000 with the funds going into the stabilization fund for mitigation, which is a general purpose stabilization fund um, that captures multiple types of mitigation and does not hold the restriction um, as noted in the special permit that the monies need to be in a separate account specifically for the construction of affordable housing. Transferring the funds to the trust meets the town's obligation for the mitigation per the special permit and the trust will hold these funds for affordable housing construction. Um, so they would be segregated and not used for other activities of the trust other than the direct construction of affordable housing. So um, our ask um, is pretty straightforward. It's a vote of support from the planning board. Um, if possible, a statement confirming that this transfer reflects the intent and meets the obligations and the special permit. And um, if questions are asked, sharing those, the statement of support and that statement um, at town meeting. Any questions? I had one small question. Um, you said that it, uh, the money would be used to um, construct affordable housing. Does that include rehab? 
It, it might. Our understanding of the intent was construction of net new units, and we would want to use the funds that this was mitigation for a reduction in the number of affordable right. units. So we would be looking, well, it might be allowed. Uh, we'd have to go talk to town council about that. Because um, that's my, you know, my only concern is that there are some possible vacant buildings around town that might be rehabbed. Oh, okay, so if you're looking at rehabbing. Or, I so, mean, in other words, taking an existing building yes. and rehabbing it for affordable housing, I just want to make sure that the money could also be used for that, not just construction of, or is construction We, we would consider that construction of new affordable housing units because it would add net new units to our SHI count, our subsidized housing inventory. I, I'll comment on that. I was on the board when, yeah. we, when we wrote this, and the, the intent was not to limit it just to new construction. It right. should really have been phrased creation yeah. of right. new affordable units. Um, you know, converting existing right. market rate units to affordable was certainly in the in our part of our intent, and our intent was we didn't have an affordable housing trust at the time, right? So that's why we asked it to go into a separate account. Right. But really, had we had an affordable housing trust created, uh, I feel confident that the board would have directed those funds to, to go right. right into that account. Um, so, why, yeah, so why, when, when you said rehab, we would not use this fund to do these funds to do any rehabilitation of existing affordable housing. This is really so about not rehabilitation of affordable existing, right. but taking, for example, the old Reliance building and yes. turning that into affordable housing units. I just want to make sure that yes, that is in the in the plan. I mean, that that's in the mix because it's creation of new net new of housing that conforms to our subsidized housing inventory and would increase okay, that, the number of units. I just think that's, that's so important. Yeah, so, that so Alan, if, that if council rules that you have to construct new units with this money, maybe well, you can come back. No, no my, well, my, my question on, was really about misunderstanding rehab. Okay. We know that we could use these funds to convert an existing property into okay. <coughs> that, that if there's any question we could always do yeah. a de minimis ruling saying that replacing the word construct with create and um, I'm, I don't think that's necessary okay, as long as that's again I'm not let's not put the cart before the horse right. um, regardless I do think this is what the intent was was for this oh, to yeah. go into a oh, fund yeah. specifically for affordable housing right. and now that the town has the trust set up uh, that's where that money belongs, sure. and I fully support this article, and uh, I will make uh, any other questions. <coughs> I'll move that the planning board support Article 16 as printed in the town meeting warrant. Second. I think I heard Hazel second first, so. Depends uh, if he talks louder. <laughs> yeah. So <that's>, <laughs> any discussion? All those in favor? That is four to zero in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan, for coming in. Thank you. Have a good good night. work. Thank you, Alan. Um, next item on the agenda is a continuation of the public hearing for 165 Flanders Site Plan Review application. Uh, while you get set up, I will see if I can switch us over to my laptop so everyone can see the presentation. And Jim, do you have any? So through the chairman, I know Luke's going to introduce himself um, from Voler here in a minute. Um, as you know, the Cumberland Farms campus is at 165 Flanders Road, and over the uh, past decade, there have been many changes at that campus, the most significant of which was um, expanding the building and, remo and moving approximately 250 uh, management workers to the site, consolidating their, their sales and management operations. This project that we're going to see this evening is to create new, uh, two new buildings. One is a 50,000 square foot off a warehouse building. The second is a mechanical building, for lack of a better word. It, it'll, it's about 17,600 square feet. It will have uh, five bays, including a wash bay. Um, and uh, supporting office and storage within that building. 
And as you know, that site is a large site. Um, it does have some resource areas, some significant resource areas, including the floodplain, because it backs up to Cedar Swamp. So that's my brief introduction. How are we doing with the, with the technology? Yeah, not doing well. <clears throat> I'm just not sure which... Uh... Maybe you could hook that to where Luke is sitting. You know what, I had success at the lectern last week. Let's okay. See, let's put it there. Oh, right, yeah. Good job. Might be able to sit down. <laughs> oh, he's, he was complaining about that. All right, feel free to stay. Great, and good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. First off, thank you. You would think all laptops would be somewhat compatible, but uh, we found out tonight that that's not the case. And, <laughs> as well prepared as you think you are, things always happen. So thank you for bringing this up. And Jim, uh, thank you. Uh, just for the record, Luke DiStefano with Bowler Engineering here on behalf of EG America in their property at 165 Flanders Road. I think probably most everybody uh, on this board and probably in town is familiar with this property. Uh, it's a pretty large property here in town. And as Jim mentioned, it's one that's undergone a sizable transformation over the last about 10 years now. I think we started this project or looking at this site back in late 2013, give or take. So we're right around that 10 year mark. And <clears throat> due to the original growth of Cumberland Farms, which as we all know was pretty significant in that time period, uh, they made some initial modifications primarily to bring their office staff back from Framingham to this location so that everything was consolidated in one space. They then reactivated the commissary within that building, which was another phase of the project. Uh, since then, uh, I think you're all aware, Cumberland Farms was acquired by Euro Garage, which was a large retail petroleum uh, company out of Europe. Uh, and they've since taken over. This has become their North America headquarters. And as you can imagine, as they've continued to grow, mostly via acquisition throughout the rest of the country, they need more support within this building. Uh, one of the projects that had originally been proposed, you can see it on here uh, in the very center of the property with some additional parking. Uh, that received, I believe, all of the approvals it needed, but due to a bunch of different reasons, some COVID related, some just operational related, that hasn't been constructed yet. That's not to say it won't be constructed, but for right now, uh, they've got more pressing needs, which leads me to the project that's in front of the board this evening. Uh, and Jim did steal most of my thunder, but uh, effectively the project is really two pieces. It's a 50,000 square foot warehouse facility, which is located where the cursor is, which is the, what I'll call the northwest corner of the property or the property nearest Flanders Road. So if you've been to the site, when you come in the main drive, that will be the area that's currently vacant lot immediately in front of what was the old pumping station or sewer lift station for the site. Uh, that's going to be supported by 42 vehicle, I'm sorry, 42 tractor trailer parking spaces located to the west and to the south. And then four loading docks in the northwest corner, or I'm sorry, southwest corner of the building. And then a series of vehicular parking uh, for employees that will use the warehouse primarily, again, on the south side of the building. That will be accessed off the main drag. We're basically gonna create, or, or you have what's effectively a four-way intersection there today. Uh, and that's effectively gonna continue. Uh, we will expand the driveway so that tractor trailers and regular passenger vehicles can enter along the south side of the building. 
circle into the site, there's plenty of room for trucks to navigate, turn around, enter any of the parking areas, loading docks, et cetera, and then exit back out and either continue to the main building itself or back to Flanders Road uh, to continue their journey wherever they're going. Uh, the second half of the project involves a maintenance building uh, just to the west of the main building. Uh, if you remember the refrigerator expansion or freezer expansion that was done, this is directly across from that. Uh, as noted, it's a 17,600, give or take, square foot addition, uh, where you'll have five tractor trailer service bays and then one wash bay, again, for the tractor trailers. Uh, you do have five tractor trailer parking spaces located just to the south, uh, and then two diesel fueling stations that are there. Uh, and that's basically to upgrade the fueling facility that's currently on the property today. If you've been there recently, that is getting to the end of its lifespan, and they thought that putting in two new high-speed fueling areas and a new 16,000 double wall fiberglass diesel storage tank uh, is not only better for them operationally, but it's better for the site is they're gonna completely overhaul and upgrade the fuel dispensing system for those <laughs> trucks. Uh, also, as Jim noted, the site has many jurisdictional areas. We got ACEC, we've got floodplain, we've got wetlands, and we've always try to maintain uh, development in areas where we're not gonna be impacting jurisdictional areas. That holds true primarily for this development with the exception of we do have some buffer areas adjacent to the maintenance garage uh, that will impact some buffers. The 50,000 square foot warehouse is basically going to be constructed in upland area. It's one of the only remaining upland areas left on the site, and it was one that Cumberland Farms had looked at years ago for different potential development options. It never materialized now, given the growth in the acquisition of EGA. They needed for support, and ultimately this warehouse was what they thought was the best option. The site overall is required to maintain 60%, uh, I believe, minimum open space, and we are still below that, or I'm sorry, we're still above that, even with this development, which is gonna create a little over 200,000 square feet of additional impervious. We're still not tripping that threshold, so we don't need variance for open space. We know that's important, and we've tried to maintain that, and we've tried to maintain as much green space and respect for the jurisdictional areas as possible. Uh, procedurally, we have filed with CONCOM. We did have one hearing with them. Uh, we've got comments back from them, but we have not gone back a second time. We've continued that several times as we awaited comments from the town's peer review engineer. As of last month, we got those comments. Unfortunately, they're pretty substantive, and we haven't had an opportunity to go through them fully and address all of the comments, so what we're going to do is we're supposed to have a CONCOM hearing next Tuesday. The likelihood is that we will continue that in an effort to, again, go through and fully vet the tie and bond comments, prepare revised plans as necessary, and a response to comment package that we will then submit not only to CONCOM, but back to this board as well. And we didn't want to continue this hearing because it was the first one where we're getting a chance to present the project to this board. And what we were hoping is to hear your comments so that we would then have your comments, CONCOM comments, and tie and bond comments that we could address all at once, make a resubmission, and in a perfect world, we might be able to get approval from both your board and the conservation when we meet with them next probably sometime in March. Uh, worst case might be April, depending on just how long uh, it takes for us to fully respond to all the comments. And with that, I'm certainly happy to provide any more detail on the plan or answer any questions the board or the audience may have. Um, in the 50,000 square foot warehouse, what exactly will they be doing in that, in that warehouse? It's basically support for their current convenience stores and, and support for the main building itself. 
As you can imagine, you always need more storage. Uh, I've been told one of the primary components being stored in there will be coffee equipment and floor tiles. I'm not exactly sure why. Call it dry, dry goods, no, no cold storage. It, it could vary. They could use it for storage of some other materials that they might need to service the convenience stores. But my understanding is more equipment storage. So yes, most likely dry storage. How many more employees are going to be going to this um, area? How many? Uh, how many more employees? I, I don't think it's many more employees. My understanding is this is going to be employees that were currently working within the building that now have more space and have adequate space to get in and out of there. We do have a total, I believe it's a net increase in 36 parking spaces with this design. So you can see the intent wasn't really to bring in new employees per se, it's just to continue to better serve uh, the building and the use that they have there today. And it just gives more employees more room to do the job they're currently doing today. Didn't you say there was gonna be 42 more truck spaces, tractor trailers? There's 42, we're putting 42 tractor trailer spaces adjacent to the warehouse, correct? So is <clears throat> I'm just trying to understand the impact on the traffic, increased traffic. So are we expecting? No. When I talk to them again, this isn't intended to be more of what they have. It's just to better facilitate what they have today. If you've been there at times, you've probably noticed they stack tractor trailers up along the access drive because they just don't have the space because part of what they're using those trailer spaces for is not only to get deliveries in and out, but for tractor trailers that are being repaired, uh, you know, storage for certain instances. So this is, again, not intended to increase traffic, it's just to better utilize the property they have. Now, is the existing fuel station inside or outside the, the wetlands buffer? It's pretty close to where it is proposed today. I, I think it's partly within the wetland buffer. The existing one? Correct. Okay. So then the new fueling station it wouldn't be anything new other than the new construction. It wouldn't be like it's it's in the new uh, or inside the wetlands, correct? The buffer? Correct. You're not creating a new detrimental use. It's a use that's there, and in my opinion, and I've been in addition to developing all sorts of buildings, uh, I cut my teeth really on gas station design. We did the one here in town and, uh, you know, anytime you're upgrading these older systems, you're only making it better. I don't have any major comments at this time. I mean, particularly since you seem to have clarified the fact that uh, you're not really adding employees or trucks, but just utilizing the space so that you'll be able to move them essentially onto the site itself instead of having them tracked up in various places. Yeah. Yeah. Which Correct. I think probably is a good thing from what I've seen. Um, I have a very minor question, which I knew if John Gelsage was here to ask you about, is um, electric uh, charging stations for cars, whether you're going to add I think they have some on site now. I'll double check. So in, in your approved site plan for the parking area, there were we required couple. electric, yeah. We haven't yet got to the point where we've required them for tractor trailers. Um, I'm sure that that day is coming. Um, but I, I don't know that many tractor trailers are yet electrified. Right, okay. Yeah, if you're creating what? How many new vehicle parking? It, it, in total, when you add everything up, because we're removing some as part of the the the, uh, the wash bay area, it's going to be a net increase of 35 or 36, I believe. Right. So, are you adding any EV stations by the new warehouse? I'm sure if I can certainly bring that back. I think that might have even been a comment in the tie-in bond letter, uh, but we'll look at it. I don't think they'd be opposed to that. I don't again, have final say, but I will certainly bring that back. It just seems like that's the direction that vehicles are moving and maybe that's some of the infrastructure in place to expand it as needed. Is there a 
specific number you guys uh, might be looking for, or just try and get as many? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me, but now. Now, are these, yeah, are these flat top buildings or do they have roofs? I'm sorry, Hazel, I'm not sure Luke heard you. No. Oh. Are these flat topped buildings or are they going to have roofs? Because I'm, I was wondering whether there was any thought of putting in solar panels. My guess is there's no plan for solar. Uh, at this point, I've seen very preliminary elevations and they didn't have solar. I believe these are going to be Butler buildings or something similar, uh, which pre-engineered buildings was most, most likely metal roofs. But uh, again, I can ask, I know at one point, and maybe you remember, there was some talk about going solar on the, the overall building. I don't know if they ever went that direction or not but I don't think there's any plans for that right now. I guess I'd appreciate it if you ask about it, just because of I think that, you know, we're all trying to be energy conscious, and, you know, if a new building is going up, if there's a possibility, particularly when you have a campus-like structure, whether there's a possibility of putting in some solar panels so that they will use energy that way instead of using it in other ways. I, I will certainly bring it up, and again, we've been looking at this site for a while. I think one of the issues that came up on the old building was structurally, it couldn't support the additional load of the solar panels, but for a new building, they can certainly design. So I will bring that up and have an answer for you next time we meet. Yeah, sure. Just a couple of questions. Um, I didn't notice in the proposal, you may have already thought about this, but the, the wash bay, will that be circulated water? Most likely. I don't think, uh, it's not intended to be like a car wash where you do have about 95% reclamated water. I'll look into that a little bit more. Yeah. I don't have an answer. I know they're not going to let 100% uh, just drain out into the storm drain, that's not, or Because that will be the issue sewer. on this site, yeah. Correct, yeah, so. Particularly for tractor trailers, they, they accumulate a lot of salt. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, my guess is they're gonna have some sort of reclamation, I just don't know how much. Okay, um, and I know that conservation will ask a question about snow storage. Have you considered that in your design? We have, we still have plenty of snow storage in upland areas. I don't remember if we, lo we had indicated it here uh, because I think for the most part the snow storage is staying in the areas where it currently is. Uh, a lot of it, well I shouldn't say a lot of it, but there's a good portion of it that's back along adjacent to the turnpike. Uh, there was some that gets stored up along the edges of the entry drive. Uh, I do know in really severe events, I believe they've had a truck some snow off-site mm -hmm. just because again they're using the whole buffalo here on this property and they don't have a lot of, mm. of free area to store it. But uh, I'll make sure we get that noted if it's not already on the plans. And traditionally, for all the reasons you guys can understand, we look to do it in areas that aren't adjacent to wetland buffers or immediately adjacent to wetland buffers or the ACEC. We want it to, you know, as it melts, uh, to either go into the storm drain system that's designed to take care of it or in an area where it's not going to impact a jurisdictional area. Uh, just a comment, I think it is important that you have uh, area for tractor trailer parking because I've witnessed the stacking along the road. This is definitely a much better design to accommodate even their existing um, deliveries and pickups to this site. Uh, uh, I know that the board is familiar with some of the uses that are on Flanders Road, that the trailer, tractor trailer trucks park on Flanders Road, and that is not a safe condition. We have a couple of food service companies further down, yeah, further, uh, further down the street that um, have a recurring problem with tractor trailers parking on Flanders Road. So this is a good solution to that potential problem. And it, it's only good for the company as well in the future because it, it should their operations expand inside the main building, this will accommodate storage and particularly for the trucks. Yeah, and it's, it's very akin, to, if you remember, when they did the freezer edition. When they did the freezer edition, 
They added, I think it was a 19,600 square foot freezer onto what they already had. And there was no increase in employees. It was just to help better facilitate uh, the needs that they currently had as they grew. And Jim's exactly right. That's, you know, we think this is ultimately going to end up in a big benefit for the site, the people who use it, and ultimately the people who travel by there every day. And how many trailer spots will you have for the 50,000 square foot building? For the 50,000, that uh, I think it's 42. Okay. Right, it's on the two end, the southern end and the western end. And then there's five next to the wash bay, and that's more for just a stack and stores. They move them in and out. Uh, so for the board, the um, our peer reviewer, Time Bond, has submitted comments. They were reviewed internally uh, by the town engineer. The town engineer then uh, circulated them to Bowler. I know that you've begun discussing that, and I know that it'll take more time. So I'm sure that uh, Luke is going to request an extension to continue this hearing. Yes. Oh, you have comments. I have a question. Is there a, a digital Say that again, I'm sorry? No, it's on. They own, I believe they own and, and operate the one off the turnpike. Oh, that is yeah. yours? Oh, yeah. it is yours. Yeah, they're yeah. the one on the turnpike. But someone, I think someone leases that. But I don't yeah. think it's digital. Yes, yes, no, it is the digital billboard, yes. It, it is digital. It, it's, I don't, I, I think it's on their property. But it's on their property. I, it is. So, um, I'm going somewhere with this. Um, I would assume so. <laughs> uh, so that digital billboard uh, is displaying uh, ads for marijuana and marijuana establishments and it's more exploited than marijuana. Yeah. I would like uh, the applicant to consider a contribution to giving the family to. Either stop displaying a lot of ads, or yeah. I'd like to see the I'd like to see the ads removed. Quite frankly, yeah, I, mean, I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, but in short, of that, I'd like to see the And I certainly will bring that back. I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, I don't know what type of legal obligations they have or what type of arrangements they've entered in with the folks they're advertising for. If someone, Jim, or someone on the board could shoot me an email, I'll get that to the right people so that, because that's... No, 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 I'm perfectly fine with I just, it's not a development related request, so it's something that I'm sure is going to need to go to somebody I don't usually deal with on a regular basis over there. Since you're the one here, you're the one Absolutely. <laughs> that, that's not the worst request I've been asked. A couple of farms come in. I'm not on a crusade. Understood. And I think hopefully Cumberland Farms, and they may not be aware of the town's feeling on these electronic billboards, and particularly with regard to things like marijuana being uh, the town, I think, came out very strongly when we talked about this moratorium. Um, that was the kind of signage they were most concerned about that would be <clears throat> within our town limits as we felt it was inappropriate. Yeah, I, I will certainly bring it back. and. You know, it is a little bit different now that it isn't a locally owned operation, but, you know, my dealings with them have shown they're always looking to be a good neighbor. So I see no reason why they wouldn't continue here. Are you requesting an extension to the 28th of February? Uh, I think we probably need beyond that. When's your meeting in March or meetings? Um, currently it's March 7th, but uh, we'll discuss our schedule. If you want to hang out, it can be the next item we discuss. 
Yeah, I, I would think we're probably going to need at least a month to get the okay. comments. I, I, if you've seen them, they're pretty significant. Um, so yeah, we can, if it's March 7th, you need the extension to for now, and then we well, can- Yeah, why don't you just request to the first meeting in March, whatever okay. that date is. That's perfect. Do you need something in writing? Yeah, just write me something quick and sign it. <laughs> Anything written, just uh, uh, respectfully request that the planning board extend the site plan review public hearing for 165 Flanders Road to the first meeting, its first meeting in March. Sure, I'll get you, can I get you that tomorrow? That's fine. The board needs to vote that. Oh, right. And if you want me to request it here, I can do that too, so it's on the record if that's easier. So I wrote you a motion. I had the date as February 28th. Yeah, what's your change it to, Just first. change that to the board's first meeting in March. All right. I move that the planning board continue the public hearing for site plan review application for 165 Flanders Road to the first planning board meeting in March at 6.30 as requested by the applicant. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in <coughs> favor? Four to zero. Thank you, favor Luke. Of continuing. Just send it to me when you can. Thanks Thank you so much. In. Have a good evening. We'll see you next month. Uh, we have uh, a... Um, Mark, are these people in the audience, were they... Uh, I be believe Gavin is here on a school project observing Oh, okay. Uh, um, Sorry. Is there one specific <laughs> agenda article you're concerned about? Or? Uh, I'm good, but um, it's really uh, interesting to listen to all. Well, thanks for coming Thank in, you. Gavin. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to move quickly now. Um, we have a preliminary subdivision plan for 48 Flanders Road. I have a letter from the applicant. Um, Dated uh, February 2nd, addressed to Jim Robbins uh, regarding 48 Flinders Road subdivision. Dear Mr. Robbins, on behalf of our client, we're, we are requesting the planning board continue the discussion regarding the preliminary site plan review for the proposed subdivision at 48 Flinders Road to the next meeting date, February 28th, 2023, while WDA continues to review, revise, and respond to town departmental comments including the recently received engineering department <coughs> comments. And that is from Barry Yassishan. Yes I don't know how to pronounce it. Sounds good. Uh, from WADA <laughs> Design Group on behalf of the applicant. And uh, what else? Any questions on that? Right, go ahead. I move that the planning board continue its discussion of the proposed preliminary plan for a residential subdivision at 48 Flanders Road to Tuesday, February 28, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. as requested by the applicant. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor? That's four to zero in favor of continuing that. Uh, we also have the next item on the agenda, next two items on the agenda. We have a continuation of the public hearing for 190 212 Oak Street and a continuation of the public hearing to modify the commercial component of special permit TOV 2014-1 for Village Commons at 1 Gleason Street. Um, we have a letter from the applicant, also dated February 2nd, 2023, addressed to Jim Robbins, town planner. Jim, we hereby request a continuance of the following two public hearings scheduled for February 7th to a meeting scheduled for February 28th, 2023. Uh, the, the public hearings are Hana Place and 1 Gleason Street, Village Commons, and that's signed Farouk Ansari, who is the applicant. Uh, I don't want to have any discussion on this because we would jeopardize his ability to vote, so. Could I just ask, point of information, are you planning to have another meeting with him prior to uh, a meeting with, um, uh, prior to I, the 20th I think we'll probably February. have another meeting before he comes back in. When that'll That's be, I don't know. Fine, I just, I, I think from um, previous contact with the applicant that it's probably a good idea to keep on top of him and have more meetings than less, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so, does somebody want to make a motion on this continuance? I move that the Planning Board continue the public hearing for site plan review application for 190-212 Oak Street and the public hearing to modify special permit 
T-OV 2014-1 for Village Commons at 1 Gleason Street to Tuesday, February 28, 2023 at 6.30 as requested by the applicant. A second. Any discussion of that motion? All those in favor of continuance, that's four to zero in favor of continuing those public hearings. Uh, next item on the agenda is an informal discussion regarding town meeting zoning articles. As I said at the beginning of the meeting, we have a public hearing on the zone, uh, uh, zoning articles at town meeting scheduled for next Wednesday at 6.30. That's Wednesday the 15th. Uh, we have, Jim, I'll let you summarize the articles, but Sure. I'm not sure we need to have too much discussion tonight because we'll, we'll have a public hearing next yeah, week. But. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, the, as you know, the public hearing is officially next Wednesday, the 15th. Um, since the hearing is not open, uh, we can talk informally about the draft articles that I circulated to you last week. Might have been actually before last week, I forget, but I recirculated them again yesterday. And I have received comments from Hazel. Thank you, Hazel. Uh, some written comments on article number two. So if anyone is reviewing them and has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And Hazel, I will address those comments to you prior to the, uh, the hearing, and then we can go over them at the hearing. All right, and I will, I only got through page four, so yep. I probably have some more comments that I'll be sending off to you prior yes. to the meeting. Yeah, that's the, that's the second article, which is quite inclusive. There are 75 changes in the second article, and we chose, so I, let's review the articles. There are three articles. The first one um, has to do with the renumbering and reorganization of the current zoning bylaw. So there are no substantive changes, not even any word changes in the first article. It's simply reordering and renumbering the current zoning bylaw to fit into the new format so that hopefully, um, even if Article 2 fails, Article 1 will allow the bylaws to be reorganized in a more intuitive fashion. So that's all that is doing, reorganizing and renumbering. The second article is all of the word and substantive changes. And when we went through the zoning bylaws page by page um, about a year and a half ago, and then submitted our comments to General Code, who we hired as a review consultant, who's, by, by the way, it's a group of attorneys that reviews bylaws all over the state. They sent us back 75 questions. And we answered all of those questions. And so they sent us back the rewrite of the bylaws with 75 suggestions that range from uh, renaming uh, state agencies to bring them up to their current names, such as the Department of Environmental Management to the Department of Environmental Protection, and similar acronyms like that to make them more current. They also addressed our fine structure within the zoning. So for example, uh, under our earth moving uh, special permit, we could find the applicant $300 a day after the first week. The state bylaw has, believe it or not, specific fines for earth moving violations, and, and it's $100 for the, uh, $50 for the first instance, $100 for the second instance, and $300 for every instance thereafter. So we decided we would adopt the state regulation because it's not likely to be challenged. So that's a, another type of substantive change. We also found that over the years we have changed some of the authority in our bylaws, like the site plan review bylaw was changed from the Board of Selectmen to the planning board. Yet in our table, our use table, the, the letter indication for who grants these permits in some instances was not changed. It was changed on some lines but not on others. So we've updated the table to, to be correct. Um, also under, and again I'm just picking a couple here, there's 75 of these. Um, under our use table for agricultural use, there was a word that was inappropriately inserted, and that word was no. And um, we said that in the old bylaw, it said that any agricultural use that had animals had to have no more than five 
acres, and actually it's supposed to be more than five acres. <laughs> Not no more than five acres. Um, so we took out the word no just to be clearer and so that there would be no confusion. But because we deleted something, added something, or changed the wording, or changed some numbers, we felt that we needed to call each one of those changes out, out of full transparency. Online, we actually have the entire zoning bylaw, 96 pages, all redlined. So if anybody wants to see exactly what the changes and where they were, they can. Or they can look at the summary, which is about six and a half pages long, with all 75 items um, identified. And John worked on this with us. So John also is aware of all 75 changes. Um, we initially thought what we'll do is we will just, we as a group, our zoning review group, will decide what we consider to be substantive. But after getting advice from our consultant and after discussing it among ourselves, we decided that no, we would be more thorough even if it's overwhelming and show every change. So this second zoning article is every change. And it, we've presented it as almost to for lack of a better word, uh, a Chinese menu. So you could delete one item or change one item without losing the entire bylaw. So that will probably take some time to explain because my explanation that I've just given you will kick the item off. <laughs> and then if someone has any particular concerns, all of these 75 changes have been posted online. They're available at the town clerk. They're also available in the planning board in hard copy. And anyone who requests them, we will send them their own separate copy. And we've had one request. So we have sent that. I've also discussed this with the Attorney General to make sure that this bylaw wouldn't have any flaws when it went to the AG for approval, because it is pretty complex. And I've chosen to follow the way she recommended, which was, again, the, the most exhaustive um, full disclosure with the article. So that's the second zoning article. The third zoning article has to do strictly with our signage bylaw, and it has two parts to it. The first part is changing the authority for signage that stands along without any other changes to the building in the downtown and any of the historic districts from the authority of the Historic Commission to the Design Review Board. And as you know, anything that's in the, design, the downtown planning overlay district or any design review district, if there are changes to anything other than a sign, the Design Review Board approves the signage as well. But where it's only a sign, currently they have to go to another board, which is the Historic Commission. So say you wanted to change your windows or your door, or your facade, your awnings, you would have to go to the Design Review Board and then go to the Historic Commission. And the Historic Commission proposed that where the, the authority overlaps, that it be strictly given to one commission or one board, and that being the Design Review Board. So it streamlines the process in terms of time, and it simplifies the process in terms of what um, review authority an applicant will deal with. I think it's a better process. That's the first part of the article. The second part of the article allows projecting signs. And as you know, in the downtown, many years ago, it actually occurred before I came here, so it's more than 30 years ago, there was, um, the building commissioner had an incident where there was a projecting sign that fell off a building and created a, a public safety issue. And it wasn't because the sign was perpendicular to the building, it was because the sign itself was probably not secured properly to the building. So over the years there have been applicants that wished they could have placard signs or uh, perpendicular signs or what we call projecting signs that are perpendicular to the building so that if you're walking down the sidewalk you can see the sign. Um, as opposed to having to walk out towards the street to look back at the building. So th they've become popular over the years, and we think it in keeping with a New England downtown. So this would allow projecting signs. And that is the third zoning article. Okay. Uh, I'm going to withhold my question until next week, because I really haven't reviewed it. Um, we're going to go through these pretty, much, pretty detailed look at all of these changes next week. So you picked the wrong meeting, or the right meeting to come to, <laughs> depending on your point of view. You're going to see us again this semester. Okay, well, oh, great. I would suggest don't come next week. <laughs> hey, watch that one at home with the blanket and the uh, good book. We're going to come back in March when you go over the couple in farm again. Oh, oh good. Okay. Cool. Good. All right. Um, does anyone have any 
general questions they want to address now or? No, I, no, as I, I said, Jim, I'll, I'll, I will review them and just send some questions that I have. Yeah, I know what I'm doing Jim Tuesday night. Start, so. but, <laughs> um, no, uh, I think Jim gave us a pretty good summary and, of what to expect both next week and at town meeting. Um, you know, the difficult thing at town meeting is the wordsmiths, the, the people who nitpick every detail and try and that's why I wanted to nitpick prior to the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, prior to the meeting, which was the reason that I was We try to figure out what was the best laws. way to do yeah. it. You know, I, and I'm not by any means discouraging anybody from doing that. I just think that no matter how much we fine tune it, we'll see some changes and suggestions oh, yeah. on town meeting floor. That's why Whether they be valid or not, we'll have to be prepared for those. So well, then we could strike it or it's like a like you said, a la carte menu. Right. So regardless, I think um, I, I certainly appreciate all the effort that's gone into this. And, um, you know, it'll be nice that you're leaving us with a clean document that we can we can screw up in the next few years. <laughs> <laughs> you can mess it up again. I am going to ask um, the town moderator if he wants me to have a digital copy of the entire bylaw, all 96 pages. I'm hoping no one will ask for that, for a red line version to be shown, because I think that that is far too confusing, and our consultant highly recommended against that to not do that. Because once you open that box, now everyone wants to see the next page and the next page. And um, I'm hoping the moderator rules that that is not necessary. Okay, agreed. Okay. You have minutes too before you get too far afield. Do we? Yes, you have minutes from the meeting of January 3rd and January 17th, the 3rd and the 17th. Uh, town meeting is at the high school. Yeah. On the 25th on the, of yeah, March. Oh, is, is that the date? Because I yeah, actually yeah. had been waiting for the date on that. It's, it's the week, was it the week after the it's election? It's the week after the election, and elections are late this year. Yeah. If you go online to the town website, the full well, aren't you on the posted. ballot? Yes. Oh, right. So you should know when town meeting is. <laughs> well, I kept waiting. It wasn't posted. I kept looking for it, and I okay. hadn't it wasn't it. posted. It has I'd not ask. been posted, and I couldn't find it. So if you if you I mean, can't yeah, find it, be here for the town. I'll just send it to you tomorrow. I'll send you it all tomorrow. Right. No, I, I, you know, that's fine. And I think the less we do to confuse the public on something like this, the better off we'll be. Only because a lot of this is is. Um, just changes in wording and things, and to have to go through and have a question on every single one of these is going to lose the important things that are in there that are being changed. And I think that's kind of what I, maybe we can work out that there's some way that um, the portions of the article that there is a thought either from the committee or from you, Jim, that are more important than perhaps a lot of the other things could be highlighted in a particular way for town meetings so that there won't be this, you know, going through it line by line by line. Right. So, well, we did, we asked you, that. you know, we did that. John can explain it. Yeah, so we highlighted all the substantive changes. Um, and that's what we were going to originally split it up between. You know, just the basic changes and then the substantive ones, and then we decided it, and I think it was General Code, code that also suggested that we put it all together in one. Right. But we'll have a sheet basically explaining the reason for the change for all 75 yeah. changes. Yeah, so I would suggest that. You, even if it's a simple word But can change. you highlight, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, is there some way to highlight the substantial changes versus just changes in wording that, and is there possibly a handout which could be given to people? That is the plan already. The so, so, Hazel, the 75 changes um, 
were narrowed down to about 15 by our group. And I kept notes on the 15 that we thought, personally, were substantive. Right, okay. Um, but we still needed to show, the, you know, the entire universal change. No, I understand So yeah. what I thought we would do, and what was recommended by our consultant, is we put together this handout, which is exactly what I sent you. And so I would entitle this Article 30, because I think it is Article 30, and I would say explanation for the 75 changes. So Article 30 explained. And so they would be numbered 1 to 75. And within the 75, there would be 15 or so, I think it's 15 or 16, that we pulled out and that I will highlight. I will say, you know, that most of these are word changes and number changes that we found errors in the language. They don't change the meaning. They're not substantive. But we found 15 that we felt did change the meaning and were substantive. And I'd like to introduce those 15 to you. And then we'll see if anyone wants further explanation. That's great. That's exactly what I was yeah. looking for. Is I just, uh, I mean, I could see with it, particularly with things like <coughs> and the word changes because of the state agency changes. It wasn't something that needed to be, you know, right. highlighted when looking at the rest. This is just the subset of changes. Okay. Yeah, and, I think this is. Uh, <coughs> I'm just looking at that, and I think something like this would be good, but it might be in. It needs further. Have an, uh, it needs further explanation. So we called what we agreed to. Our group, our four-member review group, is that we would have a cheat sheet, which basically means, okay, explain, it so that if someone asks a question, what are you going to answer? So we thought, okay, we'll just give them the answer. For the yeah. Uh, so I was, I was really thinking, you know, you'd have a column, section eight point four a column with the old language, a column with the new language, and then a column with uh, explanation. Um, so it, these, and this... Might, and then maybe we could highlight the 15 substantive ones with... I mean, again, I, I don't want to rewrite the whole thing because I think this is really good what you've done. So let's just pick, I just picked one random. Here's number 28. Section 4.3E2C is amended to change, in quotes, parties of interest to, in quotes, parties in interest. So instead of the word of, we use the word in. But the original language is noted, and the new language is noted. So you can compare what the difference is. If I did the three-column approach, which I don't think is a bad idea, I would certainly end up with at least two to three times as many pages to hand out. Okay, so you're just going to add a brief explanation to each of these? Yes. Uh, I think yeah. that'll be enough. Yeah. You know, as long as you make it clear that that, um, that we put that explanation in bold or some, yeah. something that, or put the, put the changes in bold and the explanation in, I guess. Well, in this case, we, we put them in quotes. Yes. So. I, th I think uh, what my intention is to recirculate this again to the planning board and to our working group, take comments. We'll have the public hearing next week. If I get lucky, I'll get the comments out to everybody for next week. And then we'll decide how to present the article, how to present the article, because sometimes the presentation is more important than the detail. And so that's, that's really the key. And I do expect help from the moderator, too, to basically explain to the audience how they're going to discuss this. Mm -hmm. This could take forever. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure it'll be the last article well, on town meeting. It's the next to last article right now. Yeah. <laughs> What's so the last? We should have 20 or 30 people. The there, third right? zoning bylaw. <laughs> so we're the last three articles on the warrant. Well, regardless, I think this is great work, Jim. I'm looking forward to reviewing it all. Um, and uh, uh, getting, a, getting a lot of the stuff cleaned up, because we've certainly seen instances where, um, you know, this has been problematic. Yeah, the, the intention of, the, of reordering and renumbering the bylaws is so that edits in the future can be much more easily made. 
right now we have to create new sections and we stick the new sections at the end of the bylaw because the numbering system won't accept a, an inter, you know, an intermingled, for lack of a better word, an interloping section. Will be the right word there, Madam Council at the end of the board, whatever, the, trying to insert something. It, it, our bylaws are not intuitively organized right now and that's what this whole effort was all about. All right, any more questions? All right, we do have minutes. Yeah, you have minutes from January 3, 2023, and January 17th, 2023. All right, has everyone had a chance to review those minutes? Are there any comments or changes? I move that the minutes for January 3rd and January 17th be accepted as presented. Second. I heard John second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? That's four to zero in favor of approving the minutes. And I have them here for Hazel to sign, so the signature pages are marked. Um, one other thing, can we discuss the meetings for the month of March? The March 7th meeting, I am gonna be out of town that week. Um, so you might wanna shift to that meeting date. It's okay in my calendar. So the, I'm sorry, which? The first meeting in March, the week of, of the 7th, so it would be the 6th to the 10th, I'm out of town. Okay. So you wanna go to the 14th? I'm fine with whatever you pick. <clears throat> um, Does that cause any issues being election day for the town? Oh, that's election day. We're not supposed to meet on election day. Anyway, yeah. good. Takes me off the hook. Oh, March 14th is election March 14th, yeah. Oh, the 14th is election yeah, day. Oh, okay. Is, I apologize. Yes. Not the yes. 7th. All right. <clears throat> and then we, we meet the 21st of, I guess, the 28th. But, well, we have town meeting the 25th, so we really, I, maybe we need to meet on the 7th. I don't. Can we hold it open at the moment and see whether. Um, where we are on the 28th. I mean, we could meet a different day of the week. Yep, we could do that too. You want to do the 15th? March, March 15th? No, March yeah, 15th. That works for me. All right, well, why don't, Pete, how are you doing? I guess I can make that work. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I was just looking at my kid's sports schedule, that's all. Um, and I won't be in the, uh, the 28th of February. But anyone has to change anything. 28th of March, you mean? No, 28th of February, I think we have Playing board that Tuesday. We do. It's just both months happen to fall on. Does it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just February. Water. Sorry. Um. Actually, that wouldn't be our meeting, though. That would be the. All right. So we're going to meet on the fifteenth, and then again on the twenty-first. Good. Okay. Is good with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Fifteen. Uh, and we have the twenty first. Okay. You don't do it until you miss. What? Oh, okay. they have that coming from the Oh, yeah. Push it off to the true. But Farouk. I pulled myself off like Facebook and all that. Hey, what email do you use? EPA Realtor? 
Uh, what email do you use? PP Realtor? Yeah, either one. Uh, Peter Bouchard 22 or PP Realtor. Sending an invite to everybody yeah, for the 50. Yeah, okay, that yeah, works. Not here. Sorry about that. So we'll meet on the uh, 15th of March. We, we'll meet obviously the 28th of February, the 15th of March. So that'll be, the 15th of March will be when we continue that uh, Cumberland Farms. Gavin, you got that? That's when we'll do the Cumberland Farms one, all right? Uh, and then we'll meet again on the 21st of March. Town meeting on the 25th. A busy month. And then Jim's last day is the 31st. Wow. He thinks. It seems weird. It does we, seem weird. It seems weird. So we suck him back in. <laughs> <laughs> Make him come. Or extended duty. Make him enlist again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other business, Jim? No, you did the minutes. You're fine. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? That's four to zero. Got it. That was quick. Have a great night. I will. Um... Thank you. Please get.